This question is great. My favourite questions are the ones which start with fiendishly simple setups, and yet there's all this complexity in there when you start to dig. Okay? So it's a very simple question. We're playing poker. Poker in a in a hand for poker. It is called a hand because there are five cards. So this question is, if you get given five cards, okay, what's the probability that in the five cards, in the hand, you'll have one pair, and exactly one pair, okay? No triples, no, not more than one pair, just one pair, okay? And I keep on saying, like, because it's, it's appropriate to the topic, that a problem well phrased is half solved, right? This is very, very simple if you think about it in a nice, clean, logical way. Okay, now, first things first. It starts with probability, okay? So we probably ought to work out any restrictions on our sample space, right? Are there any restrictions? On the sample space, yeah. sample space. There are no restrictions on the sample space. There's nothing like, it is known that one of, the one of the cards is a spade, or one of the cards is a king. No information like that. There are no restrictions. So therefore, what's the sample space? Sample space? I have 52 to choose from. 52 to choose from. And I want to pick five cards. There you go. That's going to be our denominator. Okay? So far, so good. Now, you have to think about how do you approach this stuff? The favorable outcomes. Okay? So it seems like the most logical place to start is with the pair itself. We'll work out the leftover cards later. Okay? Now, we have some cards here. Right? Uh, I could have set out all 52. I do, have, I do have a deck here. I think it's complete, but anyhow. Uh, I think there's enough here that you can see what's going on. 52 cards, right? You've got, uh, if you can't quite see it, these are the four suits going down, okay? And then here are, uh, it's a bit tricky, I mean, sometimes they'll call it cards, but for me to keep it unambiguous, I like to call these values, okay? So you've got values going across on your horizontal axis and suits on your vertical axis. Okay, so I want to pick a pair. I want to pick a pair, right? So the first thing I'll do is, well, pick a value, any value, right? Now, how many values are there in a whole deck of 52 cards? 13. The answer is 13, obviously, because there's four suits that are all repeated. So you do 52 on four, which gives you that 13, okay? So here's what I'm going to do. I've now, I've now done my sample space. Okay, so now I'm thinking about the pair. Okay, so first, first, I'll pick a value. Okay, now as you just told me, there are 13 to choose from, and I need to choose one value. One value? Okay, so for instance, suppose we pick the king. We pick the king. That's the value we picked out. Could be any of these, but it won't matter because they're all the same. Now, to get my pair, I know I've got a king. Now, what scenario am I in? Well, I've got four kings to choose from, right? Or rather, I've got four suits to choose from because, you know, it's, it doesn't have to be a king. So I've got four suits to choose from and I need to pick two of them because I want a pair, right? So therefore, I've picked a value and now I need to pick a suit, right? Four suits to choose from and I want to pick two of them, okay? So therefore, there you go, right there, that is the number of ways to pick a pair, right? 13 choose one times four choose two. That's just the pairs, okay? But there's a whole hand there, right? So now, as well as the pair, I think of the other three. Other three cards. Okay, now, think about this. We had, um, we had some very, very strict limitations on um, when we were picking a value and picking a suit, right? When you picked the value for the pair, you could only pick one, right? Because they have to be, in the pair, they both have to be the same, right? But now that I'm picking another three cards, right? What restrictions do I have on this? Think carefully. I started with the kings, right? So a couple of these, let's just take these two, okay? These, these two are the, there we go. They're the pair that we've picked out, okay? Now I have to pick three more cards. Let's think about their values first. Pick values. Okay, how many values must I choose for these three cards? 
How many values must I choose? There are three cards. They will have three values. Okay. Now, how many options do I have to choose from to get those three values? And the answer is, well, I can pick any of them except the king. Right? Because I can't pick the king again, then I'll have like triples or quadruples. I mean, extraordinary and unlikely, but we don't want that. We only want one pair, one pair only. So therefore, I have 12 to choose from, and I want to choose three of them, okay? So I started with the pair, I picked a value, and then I picked some suits. With the these three cards, I picked some values, plural, because there are three cards, and they can all be different values, no problem, okay? Well, now I've got to pick the suits, don't I? Okay, now let's think about this. Um, I've got three extra cards to pick out. Three extra cards to pick out. So there's my two, and I've got three more to pick. Okay. Now I've already picked out some values for them. Okay, so for instance, one example might be I pick an ace, and then a two, and then a three. So I have some values, right? And there will be th 12 choose 13 different combinations of these. I don't care about the order, right? But there's something else I need to account for, right? How many times am I going to have to think about suit? How many times? I'm going to have to think about suit for each card independently because they can all be different, right? They can all be different. So for instance, think about the ace, right? How many suits can I choose from? I have four suits to choose from. And how many suits must I choose? I must choose one for the ace. But then I have to pick for the two as well. I still have four choose one to pick from. And then I have to choose for the three. So therefore, to pick the suits here, right, because there were three cards to pick from, it's four choose one cubed. Make sense? So what we've just worked out, this pair over here, uh, 12 choose three times four choose one cubed, okay, that's the number of ways that I can pick the remaining three cards. Okay. So therefore, coming back up to the top, what is the probability? Okay, well, think about these. Do I add them or do I multiply them to combine them? I must multiply, right? Because I need the pair and the other three cards at the same time. <laughs> Otherwise, you don't have a hand at all, right? So therefore, I take these and I multiply. 13, choose 1. 4, choose 2. 12, choose 3. 4, choose 1, cubed. Okay. Now, even though it's a string of four, you can see it comes from two different places, right? So there's your pair, and there is your other three cards, right? And then you divide by your sample space that you worked out first thing, okay? So you can crunch, your calculator can crunch that. It's, it's sort of like 300 and something on 800 and something, which if you work out the decimal, turns out to be about 0.42, 42%. Which is very, very likely. Because um, actually it's quite hard to avoid getting a pair somewhere in there if you get five cards. And the more cards you get, the more likely it will be that a pair somewhere in there come in. Okay?